I'd like to talk now about next generation anaplastic lymphoma kinase, or ALK inhibitors. So we know for patients with ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer that targeted treatment with uh, ALK inhibitors like Zalcori or crizotinib are now the standard of care for patients with advanced disease based on head-to-head -head trials showing that they work better than chemotherapy in inducing major tumor responses and delaying the progression of the disease and potentially even improving survival. And while responses can sometimes last a long time with Zalcori, Unfortunately, a majority of patients will eventually go on to develop what's known as acquired resistance, where the cancer begins to grow despite continued treatment with the drug that worked so well initially. Something has changed in the cancer that's caused the drug to no longer work to inhibit it. And when we biopsy these cancers, we find that there are lots of different changes. So unlike epidermal growth factor receptor mutation positive lung cancer, there is no one dominant mutation that's leading to resistance in ALK positive lung cancer. There are lots of different uh, mechanisms. But fortunately, there are a wide array of new ALK inhibitors out there which have shown to be effective in this setting. The first one that was farthest along and in fact is already approved for patients in this setting is called Zycadia or Seritinib. This was approved last year based on a large trial in patients who had progressed on the Zalcori and uh, about 50 to 70 percent of patients will have a major response to the Zycadia with a duration of disease control that's on average probably in the 8 to 10 month range. This drug is a little bit tougher than the Zalcori, so many patients have some nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, or upset stomach, uh, but these are things that oncologists are used to dealing with, and with dose reductions and management of side effects, patients can tolerate this and it can work quite well. There are also a number of other ALK inhibitors that are still in clinical trials that are likely to be approved soon. Probably the one that's farthest along is known as electinib. So we've just recently seen trials, again, showing that between 50 and 70 percent of patients with acquired resistance to the Zalcori will respond to electinib, and the vast majority will have disease control for a fairly good period of time. Again, the average is somewhere in the 8 to 10 month range, but many patients longer than that. And at least in published results, electinib may be easier to tolerate than the uh, Zycadia. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, last count, I think there were six or seven other next generation ALK inhibitors in development. I don't have time to list all of them, and none of them have been compared to one another to know which one is best. But all of them, at least preliminarily, appear to be effective in the setting of acquired resistance to crizotinib. So what I would recommend in 2015 is uh, if patients develop an acquired resistance to uh, the Zalcori, that they preferentially enroll on a clinical trial of one of the new next generation ALK inhibitors because I think this is the only way we'll ever learn which of them is best and which one works the longest. But if you don't have a clinical trial available to you or you're not eligible for a clinical trial, your doctor can prescribe Zycadia right now and we know that that's an effective treatment. The other thing that's nice about these drugs is uh, they all seem to have some activity in brain metastases. We know that ALK positive patients develop brain metastases at an extremely high rate. And this can be a real problem, sometimes even while the rest of the cancer remains under control. Both electinib and Zycadia have been shown to have efficacy in brain metastases in addition to the rest of the body. So good news for ALK-positive lung cancer patients.